This podcast discusses video games, modern culture, and technology, and these podcasters are big fat potty mouths. If you're younger than 18 or are easily offended, please stop this podcast now. Oh, and your mom says to take out the trash and do your homework. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Game Hounds. Game Hounds, episode 242. I'm Edie Sellers. And I've got Holy Goalie and Nick Nicola in the room with me. One of the virtual ones. Yes, you do. Virtually speaking. So, uh, yeah. Trying something new, I guess, this week. Whereas, uh, you know, we haven't been able to do the editing for the show. So we've just been running live both our regular show and the uh, Happy Ending show. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yeah. In fact, I was going to go. We did live last week. It's kind of a mistake. And then this week I thought, eh, what the hell? Why don't we just uh, keep going? And You double your fun. Right. So we decided we're going on a regular show. And we're a day early, so let's see when the word gets out how many people tune in. Right. Uh, uh, Nick's got some construction going on in front of his house tomorrow. They're building a huge, huge canopy around his house so he can go out to the sidewalk and get out (laughs) of the sun. Yep. They're just (laughs) blocking out the sun. And they're painting it gray. So if he looks up. All he sees is ugly blocks. <laughs> and it's a good time because we're, oh, Coley, we're about to have a, col- a, a, a cold snap. Oh, it's going to get down to like 52? Oh, yes. <laughs> no, actually, it's going to be 50. 50 oh, how in the day this? and into the 30s at night, the mid 30s. And they're like, oh, be careful and don't and make sure to protect your plants. And here's how to make sure that your citrus doesn't get frozen and, and, and burnt by the frost. And oh, yeah, it's, it's as hilarious. bad as when they get sprinkles in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's they're freaking the hell out. It's getting down. It's yeah. the high of fifty. Oh my god! We've had some days in the teens out here already, which is unseasonably cold. But it was that was it Saturday night. I was I was playing um uh, PS4 downstairs, and all of a sudden I look on my um, my phone rings and well chimed. It's a Facebook message from my neighbor. And she's like, we came by, and she sends it's a picture of her dog standing on my front steps. We came by. You guys want to come over having a fire and some drinks? <laughs> it's like 1030 at night, 35 degrees outside. <sighs> well, that sounds like a good idea. She goes, I, she goes you got to bring wood, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there I am. So I, I take CJ out, and I hand her CJ, and she's walking down the street with CJ. So I got a, a half-empty pack of Coors Light under one arm, a couple of tree branches that fell in the backyard on the other arm, dragging them down the street. <laughs> That must have looked really good. Now I'm going to a party. <laughs> and we did. We put the wood on the fire and sat out and had a few drinks. And boy, it was cold. It was cold. And, and the, it's unbelievable how fast wood burns. It really is. Well, like, she's like, I got this huge log here. And I'm like, oh, I got all these, these 15 foot long branches I dragged down the street. We'll put them on, right? We're sitting there. 10 minutes later, I was like, wow. We're <laughs> we out of wood. wood. <laughs> We're out of wood. It's that river to pot to picket fence. <laughs> But yeah, it was, it was a cold, snapping night, 37 degrees. And then when the wind blew, <laughs> went right up my skirt. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It's, that's, uh, you know, it's, sometimes that's kind of refreshing for us girls. It is. It is. Mind you, you know, no life. Never. <laughs> cold is awful Nick, all the time. <laughs> Nick, have you ever worn a skirt? No. Really? Never? No. Why would I? Every guy should try a skirt. No. Seriously, every you guy should try a skirt. A kilt? Either a kilt or a a skirt esque thing. I've had my husband in a dress a couple times. Granted, that's been a Burning Man, but dresses can be very liberating. You might want to try it. Just saying. So Never yes met a guy who who wore one and was like, you know, this isn't bad. Nick, say yes to the dress. <laughs> <Nah>. Come on. <laughs> We might have to make that some kind of uh, like a sweepstakes, like somebody, uh, uh, a bet. Ooh, there we go. It'll have to be a bet before PAX. And we'll make you wear a skirt at PAX. 
You've got Greg legs for it. You'll fit right in with everybody there. Exactly. Like Nobody's going to look at you <laughs> sideways. Oh, there's a guy in a skirt. That's true. If you're going to do, do a dress. Do it, do it a pack. Do you don't not a dress. I'm not talking. I'm not going to frill you up or anything. We'll get you a very straightforward dress, skirt. I mean, you know, just just something yeah. from the waist down. Yeah. What is wearing in a hotel room? Right. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. Out on the floor. You got to go in public, especially uh, in March yeah. in Boston. <laughs> he puts the hound in game hounds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Aren't we a gaming podcast? Yeah. Hey, so let's uh, turn our attention to what. We've been playing. Has anybody played anything except what's on the PS4? No. Not a thing. Yeah, I played a few little Steam games. Well, actually, it's, I played Splinter Cell. Uh, on P- uh, the st- on Steam? Yeah, because uh-huh. I've got a couple things off the autumn sale. Oh, that's right. I have yet to uh, even look at the autumn sale because I don't want to know. It's it's over now. Good. I, I didn't want to know. I just I couldn't bring myself to do it. It wasn't quite as crazy as the summer sale, which is kind of to be expected. Right. But uh, I got everything I wanted. Yeah, like what? Uh, Splinter Cell, XCOM, the Bureau, or the Bureau XCOM Classified. Uh huh. Um, this game called Shadowrun Returns, like a cyberpunk point and click turn-based RPG. Uh-huh. Uh, and then like a couple kind of crazy platformers and Amnesia. The second Amnesia. Okay. And plus, I'm really excited because the new Broken Sword, the Kickstarter Broken Sword that I put paid uh, like 100 bucks to finally comes out like the first episode releases for good tomorrow. I downloaded the demo, but I never actually played it. Mm-hmm. So, oops. But hey, first episode. This is the first kickstarted game that I've kick. The first game that I've kickstarted that's actually been released. Yeah, I'm. So we're still waiting. Interesting to see how it turns out. I'm still waiting for Double Fine. What the hell? Yeah, it was yeah. that Carmageddon. In Carmageddon. In Carmageddon, was it successful? No, oh, it was. Oh yeah, it was successful. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it was successful. I emails every day about telling me all the great things that they're gonna do. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the downside of the um, Kickstarter thing is that, especially with the big budget ones, the big names, they don't feel a necessary or feel a compulsion to get these games out quickly. Which, after all this time, it's now starting to get like, okay, dudes, really? Seriously? We still have yet to hear from you? Yeah, and it, it kind of makes you not want to invest in the next guy when that happens, you right. know? This is my first time doing that, and it's like, well, here we are. It's got, got to be a year now. Uh, that's Coming a good up question. on a year for Carmageddon. Yeah, definitely. Well, no, longer than that. It's Way like a, longer than that. summertime or fall? Yeah. Yeah, no, we're talking about a year and a half. So it's, uh, I don't know. Let me find if there's any news. The only thing I did that wasn't oh, on the PS4 fine. is uh, the, the wife was actually complaining that all I do is play PS4 now and everybody's on PS4. <laughs> and uh, so we ended up playing some Diablo 3 together. Yeah, the nice. Double Fine yes. was was funded on March 13th, 2012. It got funded. Ooh, wow. Okay, well, the first episode's coming out in January. Is it? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Let me see about Kickstarter, about uh, uh, Carmageddon. Carmageddon Kickstarter. And that was funded in June of 2012. So, yeah, so in the summer of the 12th, yeah. So it's been a year and a half. A year and a half, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kind of bummed out about that. Now I'm, I've I've lost the interest to play it, you know, because it's been so long. And it, not that I think I'm going to get screwed or anything. I mean, it was an investment, but man, yeah. I I have a lot of faith that both of them are coming out. It just seems kind of odd that it's taking so long. It's got kind of reminds it seems me. Take a while to make. Yeah, but it's like the guy that, that worked on my stairs. I don't know if I told you that story. He started working on my stairs and got it to a point you could walk on it, but never came back and. 
finished it off or put in the railings. But he would show up at my house every day telling me all the things he was going to do. <laughs> and that's kind of how this Carmageddon thing is. I get an email every day telling me about all the great things that they're going to do or, or the one thing that they did do. And it just doesn't get done. Right. You get to a point where I said, you, you, dude, you stopped by my house five days in a row. You haven't done any work. Why do you come all the way over here if you're just going to tell me what you're going to do? Do it. You know? Craziness. Yeah, I'm going on to the backer site. Anyway, so, uh, Nick, what did you play? when? I mean, what of all those big ball games you bought, which one did you like? Uh, I played a game called 140, which is just like this kind of crazy platformer by the guys who did Limbo. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nothing like Limbo at all. It's really just a kind of a platformer where like all the obstacles and things kind of move in time with this electronic music. Uh, it's incredibly short. Like it took me two hours to get through it, but I only paid like two bucks. It's just kind of more, it seems like more of a, like a diversion, you know, kind of just an experiment mm -hmm. than anything else. And it's pretty neat. It's it's a fun little platformer game if you ever feel like jumping. Uh, but then I played Splinter Cell. And Splinter Cell was really cool. Is that the last one? Yeah, Blacklist. Yeah, I did play that. That was that was pretty good how you go back to the, the, the main uh, plane and, and pick your... Yeah, I, I like the plane, that like how fun. they set that up. Where it's kind of like the Normandy. Uh, in Mass Effect, where yes. yep. you you have this hub, and from that hub you go and talk to different characters, and they give you options like go talk to this guy to upgrade your suit, go talk to this girl to upgrade the plane, go talk to this guy for co-op missions. And then they all like have these side missions you can do in addition to the main missions, and that gives you – earns you money, and you can use that to like upgrade your guns and your suit and the plane and all that. And, like, it seems really, really deep. Like, compared to, you know, past Splinter Cells, what was sort of mission, start, end, and that's kind of it. There's a whole lot more metagame stuff to this that's really cool. If you want, ever want to play the, uh, the co-op only missions, let me know. I think Did I you get it. it for PC? Oh, damn, no. I have oh. it for uh, 360. Yeah, I was waiting for it to go on sale, and then I saw it on Steam for like twenty five bucks, and I thought, okay, you got me, Steam. Yeah, I haven't played any of my Steam games that I bought. I bought all those games. Every once in a while, I go back and I try to play. But since the PS Four come out, I don't know what it is. I, I I didn't think I'd be this addicted just to the handful of games that come out <laughs> PS Four. But uh, the Battlefield sucked me in again. I think we've all been playing. Well, like it's because it's also the double yeah. XP weekend. I've been playing it almost simply yeah. because of that. Although it, the double XP weekend goes until December fifth, so technically it's not. Yeah. Right. I tried to play. Not really? Yeah. Played, tried to play this morning, and twice I got booted out of a game. God, it, oh, really? It, it, I have not it, had that problem. This has got to be the worst game I've ever played, as far as glitches. I don't want to say glitches, just crashing. Yeah, it, it's a it's a it's about a thirty percent chance of crashing with me. That's very high. It crashed on me uh, the other day playing single player, and I lost all the progress in the mission, which sucks because I was right near the end of it. Yep. yep, I'm I'm really surprised you're having problems with the uh, 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 the, the the multiplayer because I've been playing it all weekend, and I think I had it. A server crash on me once. Yeah, no. The what whole I find, time. I, what I do find that happens is if you get into a game and finish the game and you stay there, you tend to be okay. But it's just if if you leave the room and go into another room, it, it, that's when I, I don't know. It it's just no rhyme or reason. I mean, all of a sudden it just. I mean, there was a like I would die and it would go blue screen, and then I would just be running around and it would go blue screen, and then at the, right at the end of the match. It would go blue screen. Yeah, the only right time I had it, it was right at the end of the match when it's trying to start up a new match. It would go blue screen. But that's no. the only time I've had yeah, it. But then again, I rarely – well, actually, it's one of the things about the double XP weekend that I noticed is that my favorite um, multiplayer mode, which is Rush, was full of idiots. Idiots. Yeah. 
people who would not actually go for the 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 objectives they would just be standing outside and shooting each other it's like um people you have you the objective has been armed you need to unarm it and they're standing right in front of it shooting each other you know shooting at guys up in the hills it's like no 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 you need to to disarm this thing so i found finally i just gave up you know that one um that one rush map we played like just the group of us with chaos who was fucking stabbing people like a little <laughs> asshole <laughs> yes that's the one with the tower where you have to go up into yes. the tower yeah i i got to that in a full game like so what is it 16 people on each side was it 32 on rush i think rush is 16 uh, is rush is 16 like full game 16 people on both sides like we pushed like pretty quickly from the beginning up until that last set of of uh objectives all of a sudden everyone just stopped going for the objectives like no one actually went for those like last two objectives instead they just kind of hung around where the previous objectives were killing each other and it took me a while and i i assume i have absolutely no real basis for this but i think Everyone there knew it was a shitty map, and they're like, "You know what? <laughs> Fuck you! I'm not Fuck doing it. this. We're all. not even gonna try." <laughs> I have actually been able to achieve success in that map. Really? Yes. How? Like, how do you push up that tower? You just you have to have essentially a bunch of people who are idiots who are running around trying to kill all the guys at the bottom and not realize that if you all get up it's upstairs, you'll be fine. Okay. Um, like, and once once the first person is up there and succeed, which I was, I was the one. That, then it was just impossible, and all I did was just just. I had a, I was actually an engineer, so I just, just um, I uh, sent down the the RPG just all down, bam, 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 just just rocket launcher down the whole thing, and nobody could get up. Because like, if people are there, the only way I can think of that. You can get through. It's just like stage a landing of Normandy and just have everyone rush in all at once. But you have to like organize everyone to do it at once. Mm -hmm. And that's just not possible. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty. um... I wish it wouldn't crash so much because it is such a. (sighs) I don't know why you're crashing because it it has been rock solid for me. This is important. Let me tell you my story. I think I told you guys, but let me tell the listeners. Um, So it it was late one night. I want to say it was a. I I don't remember what night it was. Kind of really doesn't matter. It might even been Saturday night or Thursday night or something. But I said, said, okay, here's the deal. I'm gonna. uh, Goalie? Hello? Did we just lose Goalie? Nick? Am I by myself? Hello? (laughs) Nice timing. Nice timing on that one. That was funny. (laughs) That was hilarious. Is Goalie back? I'm back. What happened? (laughs) You can't. Um, Seems funny. This was Skype, funny. Skype crashed on Skype you. Crashed Serious on story. You. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about how you're getting booted <laughs> from Battlefield. Yeah, it just follows me around. <laughs> must be assholes I'm in parties with. Like, Maybe it's like <laughs> the ghost of someone that you killed. It's it like, I want to prevent you from having fun the rest of yeah. your life. <laughs> all right, so so real just this is a all right, public service. Right, right, start okay. it over, start it over. <laughs> all right, so I said, okay, I'm going to uninstall and reinstall. So I hit delete and boom, you're done. Then I put reinstall. <laughs> it's it, and it says, okay, well we need the update, right? The 600 megabyte update. So it starts to do that first. So boom, done that. Restart the game. Goes in. It says campaign 100 percent installed, and the multiplayer was like 14 percent, and wouldn't move and wouldn't move. So I says, Chaos, what's up? He goes, well, it takes a while. So I went and I got a coffee, took a pee, come back. It didn't move. It didn't move. I'm like, something's not right. And I could hear the disc going, zzz, zzz. It was like starting and stopping. I'm like, 
I don't remember doing that when it installed last time. So, okay, okay, something's really wrong. So I, I did it again. I deleted, reinstalled, it downloaded the file. I must have done that four to five times. Nothing worked. I, w- I let it sit overnight from 1 a.m. to 5. I let it run. I said, okay, either my PS is booked or the, uh, the Battle Station booked. So it just won't install. And how can you play if you won't install? Hello, new generation. Yeah, this is great. It won't install. I can't play it. So f- about 5 a.m., I did another search on the Internet about anybody else having problems. Somebody said they got a hold of Sony, and they said to wipe the disc off and try it again. So I took the disc out. It was brand new. But it did have some fingerprint marks on the, the it's like smudges on the side from where I might have grabbed it. Took my shirt, wiped it off, put it in, started the whole install process again. It got to the screen, 14%, 15%, 16%, 17%, and, and so on. Went right up. All because of fingerprint smudges on the disc. And which is really funny because these are, te- these are Blu-ray discs, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I think so. and is it Blu-ray discs? Aren't they not supposed to be subject to these kind of issues? Well, I think they're not supposed to be. They're supposed to be hard to scratch, but I don't know about smudges. I guess yeah. smudges. Uh, I, I know, guess I'm happy that it was just needed to be wiped off, and my disc drive didn't go, and the PlayStation's not broken. But this was a three. Well, I let it run overnight, but this is a three hour battle to install this game, and I'm like, what is going on? And I, when I wiped it off, it finally installed without any issues. But I'm still crashing all the time. I'm crashing. So the reinstall didn't do it. I even deleted the save file. I deleted everything Battlefield and reinstalled. And it's still crashing on me all different times. In fact, I hold my breath when I play because if I'm having a good round, I stab somebody and I snipe somebody. It's like, oh, I need credit for that. You know, you're holding your breath to see if the game finishes. Very frustrating. Yeah. But it is. It's a solid game. And, and, and Chaos put it the best. Chaos put it the best because I, I have my issues with Battlefield and every, it, it, but it's funny everybody screams and yells in Battlefield. Ah, how did that guy kill me? And there's no way you know you, you shoot somebody with a tank and they live, and they shoot you with a pistol, you die. It's like how how does that? happen? Well, because the it depends on the pistol. I just got upgraded for a pistol that um, will kick your ass, one shot you. If you're close to me and I get on get get a beat on you, you're done. No, but yeah, it's a but changing there's, there's some... your loadouts, and that's the other thing that I don't understand. Don't understand is that yeah, you in, say in... you have no other new weapons no, of I, any kind. No, so, you know what? What I did figure out though, I, I'm the the tank guy. Okay, I'm the engineer in the tank. I, I've got a lot of upgrades in my tanks. I think some of my tanks are maxed out. I've unlocked every rocket launcher for my engineer. See, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. So th- so. It kind of sucks that if you do something as an engineer, it doesn't do anything for your gun. You need to do it with the gun. Right. Right. Exactly. You have to kill people in order to get a better gun. And you have to kill people in that mode to get a better gun for that for that class. In that class to get a better Because that's my problem. I My engineer guns, I've got tons of guns for engineer. Tons of guns for um, um, uh, uh, assault. A ton of guns for so well, some guns for support. I have zero guns for recon, and that's the one that is incredibly dependent upon your gun of how well you do. Because if you don't have a good sniper rifle, yeah, you're really screwed. Now, yeah, here's that, another yeah. thing that you have to remember: is that a lot of your gadget upgrades come out of your bronze battle packs and your gold battle packs. And when you earn them, you have to open them. They're like Christmas presents. They don't exactly make that very clear. But you get a bronze battle pack, if you don't open it, you're screwed. The other thing you have to remember is that in each of these bronze battle packs, there is usually an XP boost of anywhere between 25% and 200%. And you have to actively turn that on and it's good for an hour of game actual gameplay time that is how you up you actually um do a lot of your uh, uh up um, um leveling they almost and they don't also don't that don't explain that very well is that without using those xp boosts you are almost defeating yourself you can't possibly do well enough now the double XP weekend has been awesome, but we I used a fifty percent XP boost on my double XP weekend. I got something like forty thousand points in one round. Um, 
uh, Chaos was telling me that he had a he had a two hundred percent XP boost that he played with a double XP weekend, and he had something like a hundred and fifty thousand points in one r- round because of it. Yikes. Some obscene number. That's how, and and it was after we started using those boosts that we realized that's kind of the purpose of them is they're not supposed to be sit there and hold them. You're supposed to use them and use them a lot. That's kind of the method of leveling is with the XP boost. So um, if you haven't opened up your bronze battle packs, that's probably a number reason number one that you're get, starting to get frustrated. And uh, if you haven't customized your guns with the new equipment that you get out of the uh, bronze battle packs, problem number two and number three is using the um, the XP boost. And the XP boost, they don't make it very clear on how to use it very well. But um, what you do is when you are in a deploy, either the first deploy um, screen or a deploy screen some anytime during the match, you hit right on the D-pad and you will see boosts being an option and it will list all the boosts that you have available to you and you can, I think it's the uh, square key. You hit the square key and it will show you all the boosts that are available and you can pick a boost. And once that is activated, it's good for one hour of actual gameplay time. Yeah, the thing is though, you actually have to kill somebody with your gun to... to you know, to help no. the guns out. No, no, no. That, well, yes, you do have to kill somebody with so your gun. My thing is I don't kill many people with guns. I use the rocket launchers and, and the, the tanks. And, well, uh, then, so, I, so I guess that's, that's what I do. That's, that's but that fun. makes sense. They're not going to upgrade your gun if you're killing with rocket launchers and tanks because you're gonna, they're going to upgrade your rocket launchers and upgrade your right. tanks. But I thought they would upgrade the engineer class nope. and, and everything would go up. The so only thing good. it does upgrade is theirs. They usually get an, an a pack that has different um, abilities as far as like defense, how much flack you can take, um, different stealth skills. It's, you'll see it where you can choose offensive, defensive, um, tank engineer, mechanic. It kind of customizes your character as far as the actual physical abilities to either resist t- t- um, being detected hey, I, or I'm amount dropping of- out big time. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm in and out. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, are. Ditto. Yeah, so I don't know if it's me or you. So you wanna uh, you wanna host the call, lady? Oh, well, there you are. You're coming back now. Yeah, but I've been coming back for five minutes now, and it keeps going out. Okay. Out. Yeah, sure. I'll I'll hang up, and uh, you can host the call. Yay! No, 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 no. You should host the call. That's what I'm saying. I'll hang up, and I'll sorry. I'll host the call. All right, calls. So so we're live. Live. Yay! Well, See, this is the some, stuff I used to have to edit out. Put some out. bumper music on. This is this is how we should do it. Put some bumper music. We'll be back after this match. Oh, uh, actually, no, no. Hold on a second. Let me find some bumper music first. It's like I can't just like throw bumper music out. Uh let me find. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. How about something called the Fugitive? Yes. No, I like this one. La Tua Vanada, Vanita by Melissa Carmella. I have no idea what it is. So we're going to throw in some bumper music. And here you go. Okay, we'll be back in a moment. Nascondermi è per questo che mi trovi ancora qua E penso che avrei voluto nascondermi dal senso della mia incapacità Nessuna soglia di sopportazione, nessuno dei tuoi sguardi non ha saputo raccontare di questa tua libertà, di questa tua falsità e mio errore, o oh, forse la tua vanità, no, non ci sono per te, non ci sarà un'altra opportunità.
All right, and we're sort of back. You will probably hear some stuff going on in the background that's uh, goalie going in and out of the conversation, but we have Nick. Yeah, the one you really want. Yeah, did you, did, have you, you played a little bit of Battlefield, but you really haven't participated in the uh, Double XP event. No, I played a good uh, chunk of it. Yeah? Yeah, it's just that I, I, you know, sometimes Battlefield just gets to you. Yeah. I had and, Battlefield dreams the other night. Ah, uh, you've gotten to that point now where you're dreaming of the game. Yes, I can see just little orange um, uh, triangles over <laughs> few, in the distance, and it's like I'm chasing after. I'm like, gonna get that fucker, gonna get that fucker. <laughs> Dream of orange triangles. It is, and it was a very not a very restful sleep, unfortunately. Ah, uh, see, I I always dream about my games uh the most vivid dreams i had were mass effect dreams and dragon age or dragon age or or yeah dragon age origins was the most of the you gotta say oranges i i know I, <laughs> <laughs> it'll always be dragon age oranges to me um but dragon age origins um i had very vivid dreams but i slept well through those because they were just story dreams when you're chasing after something and trying to shoot something yeah, not so good. Oh, yeah. Battlefield is stressful. It is not relaxing at all. No, I have found myself very pissed off. Very like pissed you, off in that game. <laughs> you, you said it best. And it's like something I've always remembered when you said, like, Battlefield is a game that makes it feel like you're losing even when you're winning. <laughs> like, Thank I, you for giving oh, the credit on that. I just don't know why that is. But you're totally right about that. Like, it always feels like you're losing. Uh, yeah. But uh, I've actually met some really, especially with the XP weekend, really nice people, which is, I'm, I can't believe I'm saying that about a PlayStation, but I've met really, really nice people in the uh, Battlefield 4 when I don't get into a party and I have just par just the chat, um, the game chat open. Some really awesome and awesome, awesome players. Man, if if I got all of the people that I met on one team, I could sit back and practice my sniping. Because that's what I'm saying is that I need to be a sniper. And I've been trying very hard to hang back and be a sniper, knowing I'm going to suck. And I have, up to the point of where I've gotten in a match, I've gotten 50 points. Yeah. But knowing that I have to shoot people and use that that sniper rifle as much as I can so I can get past that sniper rifle. Um, so yeah, that's frustrating because as soon as I go into a game where I'm trying to snipe, I will invariably be in a group that's full of a bunch of just goddamn idiots, just absolute slack jaw, mouth breathing yokels. And they don't get that you're supposed to go chase after and get the objective in rush. But I have found that um, it was chaos that invited me into it. It's called something called obliteration, which is yeah, essentially yeah. like conquest, but it's a small conquest, not a big conquest. And one of the problems with conquest when you're trying to upgrade your, your sniper rifle is that people could come from you from behind. There could mm -hmm. come from you for, and from any direction. So you're really, it drops you in the middle of the map and you're just running around like it's, it's war. Whereas with Rush, it's great because everybody's kind of always in front of you. You know where they're coming from and it's, it's a, it's a line. So they're not coming from behind you. You don't have to worry about what, where's the best place to set up as a sniper. But, um, the, uh, um, um, the conquest or the obliteration is kind of nice because it's a not enough people, not a lot of people playing it, which is good. And um, it's a smaller map and the matches are very much quicker. Yeah. So I like it. There's another cool one. I forget what it's called, but it's, it's a kind of capture the flag where um, there's there... like a bomb that everyone's fighting over. Oh, and you domination bomb. Yeah. Domination's really fun. I, I didn't understand it. Explain domination to me. There's basically a bomb. There's one bomb, and there are uh, two objectives on the side. Think of it as capture the flag. You know, you have to go, well, but with one flag, not two. 
Mm -hmm. So, you know, you want to go capture the flag, bring it back to your base. Except instead of that, you want to go capture the bomb, take it to the enemy's base, and blow up their... Um, their objective. I don't know, their station. Yeah. And so you're constantly fighting to first get the bomb and carry it uh, because the maps are really, really small. So it's fairly easy to run across the whole map. So, And when one guy gets the bomb, he automatically appears in the enemy's map. So everyone is constantly chasing after this bomb carrier. And it leads to some great moments of you having to work together to like escort the bomb carrier through, you know, the hellfire uh, for them to get uh, to the the station. The one game I played had uh, the enemy had a helicopter and they were just completely wiping us every time until we finally banded together, took down the helicopter and it's like, yes, everyone's cheering. Then we all got killed by like some guy that came up from the, the <laughs> like subway. That's Battlefield. But yeah. it was great because we took out the helicopter. And it was, you know, a moment of triumph. And, and you guys, if you ever want to play Battlefield, you really should play with me. Because I am the bullet magnet. For some reason, there will be a large group of like six of us all running across an open field. And I will be the one that gets shot down. Nobody, everybody else will make it. I'm the one that absorbs all the bullets and goes down. It's just the way it is. At, even chaos is like, wow, I can't believe that how many bullets you take. It's, it's, it's like I'm everybody's favorite target. It's like I'm wearing red in the middle of the battlefield. Like, hi, guys, look at me. Hey, I'm the distraction. So right, anytime so you play with me. some crazy internet going on over here. Some pages are loading and some are not. Huh. So, weird. Yeah, so weird. It's really weird, yeah. What's Yay, going? it's finally you. Yeah, I'm looking at my ping. My ping is super low, so I'm golden this time. Yeah, no, I'm getting yeah, something. Yeah, I'm good, too. Not, so I just had a yellow bar. Yeah, that's the problem with PCs, you know. <laughs> that was my internet on my router. Uh-huh. Sure it is. <laughs> and, uh, I'm just doing I, what you do to me, about Max. <laughs> yeah. So. I what I was saying for I, uh, for I got rudely, rudely interrupted. <laughs> well, again. Uh, Chaos had had a really good point, and he said that um, it was as frustrating as Battlefield gets, and as many times as stuff goes wrong and you hide behind a wall and somebody shoots you, and you're like, how does that happen, blah, 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 blah. He said you have these Battlefield moments where something really cool happens, and it just wipes away all the bad. It does. And he's right. I mean, there's, I unlock some really cool things. I got the stinger now, and I'm, I just take out helicopters left and right, and I... And now we lost all the goal again. Ugh, poor thing. Gully, if you are on, we cannot hear you. You are gone completely. Last thing we heard was... Eh. Yeah, the... Um, and I'm, I'm with Gully on, and both Gully and Chaos on that one. Because I've had a couple of moments where I've met up with people that were in the... Uh, in, battle, in the, like, just regular chat... And just got to talking with them. And they're, the, invariably, it's always somebody who's always on the top of the list. And I just straight out say this. Hey, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not very good at this game. I love it, but I'm not very good. So just so you know, I'm just going to try and hold my own. And, and there was one where he and I ran for, it was in Rush, we ran for the objective. And it was our objective. We were defending it. And it was, it, it was uh, armed. And... As I, he was disarming it, and as I ran up, I shot the guy that was literally had his knife in the air and was going to stab him in the back and disarmed it at the, was, had, was as disarming it and was died the second it was disarmed. And he was like, dude, that was awesome. <laughs> like, yes, yes, even if I suck, somebody thought that was awesome. <laughs> that's, that's the battlefield moment. Yeah, that's the battlefield moment. Yeah, it is cool. There have been a couple moments where I've gotten stabbed and I've been like, oh, son of a bitch. And then all of a sudden I'm, I'm not being stabbed anymore. And look around and there's a teammate right there who shot the guy <laughs> as he was in the process of stabbing me. Yeah. It's like, all right. Now, was there, five, was there counter stabbing in the previous game? No. no. The counter, I've done it once. Not intentional. 
and it, I did it, and it was awesome. It was like, yeah, yeah, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> and then, of course, somebody shoots you while you're celebrating. <laughs> it always every time I go to stab, they get counter stabbed. It's like I don't even bother stabbing anymore. Every time I get counter stabbed, like, what really? I have, I have only, really? I've been counter stabbed a couple of times, but when I got to actually counter stab somebody, it was like I just wanted to drop the controller right there and walk out. It's like done. Can't get any better than that. I'm always afraid I'll get counter stabbed, but actually, a majority of the time that I stab people, it's successful. Yeah, me too. Ah, <sighs> welcome back, Gully. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm still in and out. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I giggity. Don't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I had somebody had to say that. It's my. It's my connection. So, uh, uh, that's all I played really is that. And I went back to, um, Assassin's Creed for a night because Battlefield was pissing me off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, it's great, but it does piss you off. Yep. Uh, can, can, before we, can we, before we get to Assassin's Creed, can I just ask everybody one question here? A CJ box in the background. Yeah. Um, what is it about Kill Zone that is just, we don't want to play it? I don't know. Oh, because so many See, people are talking how awesome it is. And I didn't like it either. I think it's the controls. I think it's a weak story, at least at you the say beginning. That, and part of me, I keep seeing um, commercials for it. And the commercials look really cool. And I want to play it, especially with Battlefield, you know, crashing. And right. I've, I've, I've kind of lost interest in the campaign because it crashed on. Well, first, it actually deleted my progress oh, it so i had to replay like the first three missions and then it crashed on me and lost my progress in the mission and i thought okay i i don't i don't want to play this campaign anymore at least not for a while uh-huh so i've kind of lost interest in that but i don't know i keep seeing commercial for shadowfall and i'm really interested in it i don't want to go out and buy it because you know i've already bought my playstation games but i'm certainly intrigued by it i I'm very interested in in Killzone. I not like I said. I'm not haven't been very impressed so far with it. I I tried it and I got sort of to the first mission, and it was my first PlayStation a first PlayStation game. It was a shooter. Bad idea because you don't you have takes a while to get used to the new controller and the touchpad and the. You know, new buttons, everything's in different places. Probably not the best one to put in. Number two was, um, I, I don't, I've never played a kill zone before, so I'm not familiar with what you're supposed to do as far as, you know, like how to run and how to do all these things that are probably pretty evident to somebody who's played kill zone before. Number three is I wasn't that terribly impressed with the story. So it didn't grab me and rip me and pull me in and say, this is awesome, you need to play this. As opposed to Assassin's Creed, which was the perfect game to start off with. Fantastic story, very slowly ramping up, more complex um, um, a control scheme. Does a pretty good job in explaining how to do stuff. And visually just freaking awesome. You know, mm -hmm. well paced. Killzone is a, is a first person shooter. That's the thing about them. They're not paced. There's no pacing. You just you shoot shit. That's what you do. Yeah. And... Assassin's Creed has pacing and needed something that was kind of going to baby steps me through the new controller. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't Maybe. ramp you up very well. It's it's just not a very fun game. Do you think yeah. you need time to get used to this controller before you go back to it? No, it's just it, my issue is I don't know what to do or where to go. And as soon as you think you do, then you hit the up button to show you the little red arrows or whatever it is to show you where to go. And they blend in with the environment. And you can't see it. You know, I'm at the very first mission, which is boring, and I got to find the crew. What the hell? Where do I go? Then I find the crew, and you got to go find something else, and the arrows are all over the place. It's just mm -hmm. not a clear, not that I want it to be a linear game per se, but I've never played this, and I'm lost, and, and I kind of don't even care. <laughs> you know, just at a point, I just don't even care. Jaeger is asking me, did you guys see the tweet by Stephen Toulouse? No. Was there a tweet? I mean, Stephen Toulouse obviously tweets, but was there a particular tweet? Have you ever heard anything about this? No. 
Steven Toulouse? Steven Toulouse used to be the band hammer at, at um, Xbox. Okay, that's right. That's right. I knew that name sounded familiar. We had him on the show. Or was... did Were you around for that? No. Um... No, so yeah, I'm. I'm. I may go back to Killzone. I may just send it off to Chaos. I want to try it again. Yeah. I, I want to give it another shot. Yeah, back in one of those days. I'm also. I'm finding that I am starting to reach that line where if I don't see another awesome game come out, I'm going to lose some interest. What do you mean? Uh, I'm kind of. I don't want to say I'm getting bored with these games but I'm kind of getting a little bored of these games even though I haven't finished them I'm kind of missing the new hotness hmm. I always find that that weird like maybe it's just me because I, I like finishing games and there are times when I purposely won't continue like I, I constantly feel this nagging sensation because I haven't finished GTA 5 I'm, I'm over GTA 5 I'm not I really enjoy really? GTA 5 Okay, here's the, the Jaeger just posted what uh, Stephen Toulouse wrote in his Twitter. Now, keep in mind that Stephen Toulouse was the banhammer, the head of enforcement at Xbox Live for many years, and he was the ultimate say of whether you got your gamer tag uh, disappeared or just kept off for a weekend. He was the badass. But he was a Microsoft employee and very high up and said in a tweet after a week with the Xbox One, I can objectively say everything I want to do that I did on the 360 is either not there or much harder to do. And that is not the first time I've heard that for oh. chat is very difficult now. I've heard the party systems really weird. Yeah. Like how you you get a party and then go into a game and like the kind of party type changes to be that game specific type and so it almost like it automatically invites your friends to whatever game you're playing automatically invites the party to whatever game the host is playing <sighs> yeah it did that to me one time too i was in a party with somebody and all of a sudden i was not in the party why do they have to fix things that aren't broke the, the xbox 360's chat system was perfect absolutely perfect didn't need improvement it was the only thing that was annoying about the party system was the uh, the what do they call those conditional um prompts where if you were in a game then it would when you go into it you may or may not be a quick button to say join join the party or join the party and game you always had to join the party and game if it was a quick button but yeah, you could go into the menu and you could say join the party or go into the party mm -hmm. there were ways around it it was a little just a little bit clunky but it was fine it was only slightly clunky well, I, now I i'm heard, hearing everything's clunky things i don't want to talk crap about it because i haven't actually tried it in practice right because there are always going to be edge cases of people trying to do something weird and bumping up against the wall that a majority of people will never have to do. Mm -hmm. But I, it sounded like that started like it was going to have a but. I don't want to say Oh, no. Anything, but. I was going to say but. That, no. that is the but. No. That sometimes there are edge cases that complain real loudly about stuff that most yeah. people won't. It definitely – it's not 360. That's what it's not. But it's, yeah. it's, from what I hear, it's a heck of a lot better than the PS3. Oh, so, yes. Well, everything oh, was yeah. better than the PS3. Yeah. So, I mean, it's... Well, PS3 didn't right even have... Can, it works. I mean, I was in a game. party with, with, with Sly, and um, it, it was fine. I've been in parties with you guys, and it's fine. It, it, it's, it's different than the 360. It's not... Oh, wait a minute. Are you talking about PlayStation 4 or 3 or... 4. Okay. We were talking about the Xbox One. Where are you? <laughs> oh, so I keep cutting in and out. I'm, I care about Yeah, that. we're talking about the Xbox One. That, that's it. Step two says that after a week with the Xbox One, I could objectively say everything I want to do on, I did, everything I want to do and I did on the 360 is either not there or much harder to do. Oh, it's definitely more complex. And and everybody will tell you that. I have uh, two friends now with the Xbox One and both tell me that, boy, it, it's it's not 360 easy, but, you know, they got to spend time with it and set it up and sync it and all this. So they said it's definitely a lot more complex Yeah. than the Xbox 360. Hey, while we're here, I mean, we've got 
to have an hour. You want to? I want to actually do the news during the show, since we're I, starting to get onto news stuff. We. I don't know if I'll survive. I just checked, and there's an internet outage in my area, so I could be up and down. Right. So if okay, you guys okay. want to run it, if I, if I get really bad, I'm just going to bounce. Like you ever bring news to the table? Anyway, come on. Oh, there's no Angry Birds news. So why would you have anything to say? Is there no Angry Birds news? There's no Angry Birds news. Because Angry Birds was one of the launch games for the new console. Did Gully cut up? <laughs> <laughs> I got some news for you. I love you. <laughs> I, love I you got some news it. for you right here. <laughs> It's a short story, but it's got a great ending. A happy ending. <laughs> I love you two so much. All right, so let's hit the news. This is the Game Hounds News, the news using commentary of the week in gaming with Gamer Edie, Holy Goalie, and Nick D. Nicola. And our first item is... The Xbox One releases... Yeah, um, apparently, according yeah. to uh, these people that matter, I guess a couple of different research firms said that uh, the Xbox One slaughtered the PlayStation 2. Um, Over Black Friday. At Black, Black Friday. Friday. Sorry, PlayStation mm-hmm. 4 at Black Friday. PlayStation 2, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I imagine I, the Xbox One would beat out the PlayStation 2. <laughs> I hope to God it would. <laughs> You said you said firm. I did. <laughs> but anyway, what I think it was a lot of people. I think the pre-orders and the initial buy for the PS4 were high. Yeah, and I I don't know how much or how many are still available for the PS4. So maybe that's why people went Xbox One, or maybe people heard good things about the Xbox One and went that way. But I think when all said and done, after Black Friday, after the pre and everything, I think it's pretty close. Yeah. And remember, we're only talking well, about I that saw, that report was just two stores. Just and what I saw in the specific story is that Xbox sales made up like 60% of console things. Right. And PS4 was 30. But it's Xbox One and Xbox 360 combined right. reached that 60%. Um, so... Xbox One was and the three hundred and sixty. The three hundred and sixty was selling for ninety nine dollars. Yes, at Walmart. At Walmart. And that's one of the reasons it sold so well. So, if you take the new consoles, they they sold about the same, like thirty thirty percent each. Okay, good. All right, that's and that's what makes me what really irks me about a lot of these <clears throat> reports is Xbox One beats PS Four at Walmart. Target on Black Friday report big 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 letters and then you actually look down and you see that uh, that Xbox One was thirty one percent and Xbox three sixty was thirty percent actually Xbox three sixty was thirty percent Xbox One was thirty one percent PlayStation four was fifteen so half as much okay so it was fifteen percent okay right. so I was so it was yeah no it was it was a significant amount yeah. Sorry, I was going I off think, of you because I was looking at the infographic and listening to what you were saying and didn't realize I would read it wrong. And I think it does relate to like what you said before. Um, and I think they mentioned it in an article, or at least the article I read, that since PlayStation came out earlier, it had kind of sold all the way through right. its initial shipment. So right. it wasn't the, has available, if available at all. Right. And that's what did I say? What did I say? I said... The console maker with consoles on the shelves on Black Friday is going to win Black Friday. And mm-hmm. who keeps it on the shelves to over Christmas is going to win Christmas. S- Sony, when they said, oh, we're a little afraid of not of having too many on the shelves because it might give the impression it's not selling. As soon as I heard that, I'm like, you guys are making a huge fucking mistake, guys. Because what's going to happen is you're going to see numbers of PlayStation of Xbox One beating PlayStation and it's not that people want it necessarily but because that's what's on the shelves and that's what's going to make the impression that you're not selling not what's that you have you have stock on the shelves what's interesting about Sony is that maybe they were holding product back from the US from North America because they launched in Europe right this weekend that's that's also and, another issue is the slow rollout and PSN had a bit of trouble uh, 
keeping up with the burst of new players. They actually suspended Code Redemption on PSN. Really? So, I didn't hear about that. Uh, I bought a you know a year long subscription to PS Plus on Amazon for like half off, and when I tried to submit it, like it didn't work. I put in the code, hit continue, and it would just kind of exit back to the homepage. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, "What is going on?" I tried that a couple times, and then I went up to Google. And saw that, oh, PSN is having trouble thanks to the European launch, so they suspended code redemption. So I just kind of hung on to that code until Sunday, because uh, I tried to do it on Black Friday. Hung, hung on to it until Sunday, and then I was able to put it in without any trouble. Right. Uh, Black Void says, is the Xbox light enough to be delivered by Amazon drone? Okay, all right. No. Let me just talk about the Amazon drone, even though it's not technically gaming it is technology and can we say it's not even news i saw that 60 minutes clip and the guy was even saying yeah we're not going to do this until 2016 and even then that's being like optimistic that's very optimistic it is all right uh first off it would be items under five pounds so no it's not light enough to be an amazon drum those could be games it could be games but two and this is the most important thing GPS driven drones, which is what this would be, are illegal to fly in the United States outside. In fact, the only place that I was watching a uh, another report about it that uh, actually was I think was CBS News that they showed you a GPS driven drone, but they could only fly it inside the office because it is illegal to take it outside. You have to have a government permit because of it. They'll get a permit. Well, no, it's not like a government well, permit. They won't get a permit. No, They'll that's for law to make right. They have to change legal. the federal Isn't law. That already, something working its way through. Right, and it's a very, very big issue. Like the only times they've so far that they've actually allowed these GPS-driven drones to be outside in urban areas for research purposes. That's why I mean permits. They have to have a research permit, and they did one in New York City, and it promptly flew into a skyscraper. Yeah. <laughs> So, oops. <laughs> yeah, they actually had film footage from it. It's pretty funny. I, I didn't know of this. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> I'm not signing for it. You can't make me. Right. So, it, I could just picture. Remember the Bugs Bunny cartoon? The picture when he opens the door and there's the rocket kind of sitting there bobbing up and down. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of picture the drone's sitting there signing this. Ah. Yeah, so, so, the, the, the you're going to have the only way that the technology is going to be better is research. The only way you could do research right now is to get a government permit. You have to go to the government to get a permit to research it just to fly it at a park for fuck's sake. And you have to get that permit on Tuesday between one and two. Right. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, it's it's there's a big fat gatekeeper on the technology. So it's not going to happen because I think the only thing that came up was that there was a, a commercial about a drone delivering um, a Domino's pizza and then some other commercial that had started it where something was being delivered. But it wasn't it was simulated. It was not a right down a GPS drone. And it was Jeff Bezos, who is fucking insane. Um, and he was the one that said, yeah, you know, actually this would work for Amazon because most of our packages, 65% of our packages are under five pounds. So this would be perfect. Mm-hmm. I think that's all that happened. Now there's a 60 minutes, um, segment about like Amazon and how they get things out and kind of their, their shipping process. Yeah. And at the end he's, Bezos was like, I got something to show you. Like this is a, a whole new thing. Look at drones. <laughs> You do realize this is Amazon throwing something in there to get it on in the news at the beginning of the Christmas season, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Amazon. We're going hey, to make a flying up. car. <laughs> sure we are. That's Game Hounds. I want to announce to you right now. Game Hounds is going to have a flying car. And right now, my research says that we should have it available for the mass market in 2025. Print it. Okay. That's how it's done. Will I get XM radio? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. In fact, it's a flying car. So what we're going to do is if you want to listen to anybody in particular singing, it will fly you over that artist's house where that artist will give an impromptu live show for you. Hey, where did you find that uh, that E stuff? 
East. He was talking about East? That, uh, Eric Newstead over there. Who? Was that on Twitter? You were just talking about what he said oh. about Xbox One. Was that on Twitter? Uh, Steven. Steven Toulouse. Steven Toulouse. Oh, Steven Toulouse. I thought it was uh, Eric New Eric New Steven Toulouse. Oh. Dude, we had him on the show. You talked to him. Steptoe. I get Steptoe and E <laughs> mixed up all the time. And E? Was that on Twitter that he said that? Yeah, it was on Twitter. Oh. Yeah, you know, Steptoe, Ecstasy, they just they go <laughs> hand in hand. <laughs> No, e, remember, the, if you listen to the Nelson show, he had E and Steptoe and uh, the chick on there, token chick like we have. You mean Krista? Trixie? No, no, no. What's her name? I got my picture taken with her. She got her picture taken with me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Info Scout has also released a list of the top performing software at Walmart and Target with multiplayer shooter Call of Duty Ghosts leading the way on Black Friday. Number one was Call of Duty, Ghost. Two was Disney Infinity. Uh. Three is Skylander Swap Force. <laughs> In other words... People, kids like the toys. Yes, and that's what I'm saying is that we are looking at parents that are buying stuff for their kids for Christmas. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> oh, what does that say? That it's Call of Duty, then Disney Infinity and Skyland. Right. <laughs> It's like, wait a minute. One of these is not like the other. <laughs> One of these things. Not just not the same. Number four was Grand Theft Auto 5. Number five is Madden. Six, Assassin's Creed. Seven, yeah. Batman. Yeah, that's good. Eight was NBA 2K14. Nine I is... almost got that. I almost got that. Uh, Lego nine I, is... I've heard that the... What is it? The, yeah, the 2K basketball it, game. It's phenomenal. Yeah, it's great. And like compared to the EA one is which is just like a disaster. Really? Yeah. Like over the weekend EA put out two apologies. <laughs> one was for how crappy Battlefield was. The other was for how crappy the basketball game was. <laughs> I almost got the bat I I went with the soccer game. I got the soccer. I'll talk about that on happy endings tomorrow, but I did get okay. the soccer game. Look I haven't played a soccer game since the Intellivision. Wow. <laughs> That's wow. a long time. Nine is Lego Marvel Superheroes. Ten is Assassin's Creed Revelations. Eleven is oh. Call of Duty Black Ops. Twelve is FIFA 14. Thirteen is uh, NCA Football 14. Fourteen is Mario La Super Mario 3D Land. Fifteen is WWE 2K14. Sixteen, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Seventeen, Last of what? Us. What? Which Modern Warfare? Call of Duty 4. Really? Yes. What? Yes. Yes. Huh. Uh like I said, it's a lot of parents. These are not the first gen these are not the first adopters. These are not oh, yeah, maybe us. It's just someone looking and seeing, oh, Call of Duty it's for five bucks. Five bucks. Right. Interesting. Seventeen Last of Us, eighteen oh, Legend good. of Zelda, Link Between Worlds, nineteen Kill Zone Shadowfall. Wow. That's surprising. Well, Killzone Shadowfall was only PS4, right? They didn't have a PS3 yeah, version. Yeah, only PS4. Yeah, that's why, because it wasn't on sale. Mm. And 20 is Batman Arkham City. Yeah, there was zero, zero prices, especially Cyber Monday, but zero sales on PS4 and Xbox One games. Yeah. yeah. Nothing, yeah, was nothing, which was nothing. like a big shot in the nuts for me. Speaking of big shots in the nuts, have you heard that Lindsay Lohan is suing Rockstar? Yeah, I heard a rumor about that. I don't know if it's true, but I wouldn't put it. Uh, no, I totally wouldn't put it past her. Okay, so here's the story is that uh, Lindsay Lohan, uh, star of Mean Girls and Parent Trap, meaning that she hasn't acted in anything even remotely responsibly um, in the last, uh, what, decade? Maybe? She was in Machete. She was in Machete, and she was in that that one where she had she played a she starred with a porn star, and who said that even she was she, when the porn star says you're unprofessional, you know you're really messed up. Anyway, uh, TMZ has reported that uh, Lindsay Lohan's lawyers are in the process of drafting a lawsuit against Rockstar Games that demands serious money. The um, 
the reason for doing that is that she's, according to her, GTA 4's box art features a woman holding a cell phone. You know which one we're talking about if you play GTA 4. When you're, it's not just the box art, but also the loading screen. It's the very first loading screen that comes up. And that's the girl in the red bikini holding the telephone um, and with a peace sign. She says that that resembles her. Oh, get over yourself. <laughs> it's funny because I've, I've, seen, I've seen forum like topics where people discuss who that's based after. Right. Lindsay Lohan never came up. Right. And it's be right. Exactly. And um, she also says that in, in another uh, infraction in the game, it says that it also features a mission that has players take taking a Logan, Lohan-esque character to escape the paparazzi. And finally, the nail in the coffin being that there's also a mission at a hotel resembling Chateau Marmont in West, West Hollywood, a place where Lohan visits and lived for a period of time. And at that mission, you're supposed to take pictures of a, um, of a starlet being, being fucked, essentially. You know what? This, this proves how she, good... Um, Rockstar was with the parody <laughs> because, like, the generic batshit crazy, you know, Hollywood starlet, druggy slut character, Lohan is like, hey, that's clearly me. I'm going to sue you. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I want to say this to Lindsay Lohan and her lawyers. I, I've been in, I've played that game a lot. At no time did I think about Lindsay Lohan, except for once, and this might be actionable, is I was rear-ended by an SUV, and at that moment, that was most, more Lindsay Lohan than anything that's in their <laughs> lawsuit that says it's Lindsay Lohan. It's not. That was the most likely scenario for her. But anyway, it's, it's, a, um, it's, it's Lindsay Lohan trying to grab his lines, and she did, including ours. Mm-hmm. It's one of those lawsuits that I'm sure Rockstar gets hit with all the right. time because they're GTA. Right, and we're talking about Lindsay Lohan's lawyers. Have we t yeah. Come on. Her lawyers? Her lawyers, really? Her lawyers, they, they don't even want to be her lawyers. <laughs> all the good <laughs> ones have abandoned her. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything else? Anybody? Um, I have PS4 announced the sales after launching in uh, Europe, and I guess they after the launch in Europe. And I'll, <laughs> this must be a typo on Ars Technica. Uh, the systems launch in Europe and Australasia. <laughs> No, that's that's it's Australia and Asia at the same time. Oh, is that an actual thing? It's a phrase, Australasia. I have never seen that word before. Yeah, I think that that might be what it because you'd think someone would have caught that in editing. I'm gonna, yeah. I am going to assume that it is not a typo. Okay, Australasia. There you go. Yeah, that the, sounds the, like the, a um, good fictional country. Yeah, I heard. I heard that they uh, they launched the uh, PS4 in Europe and the UK. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so apparently they got 700,000 uh, additional units, and that brought the total to 2.1 million PS4s worldwide as of December 1st. Yeah. Um, I guess as I'm reading about Kotaku is that as the Xbox One is starting to get into more hands, they're starting to hear more complaints. Now, keep in mind that everybody's very twitchy about Xbox One because they were had reasonably very twitchy yeah. about the 360 they, on its launch. People people push the button and like, oh God, please. Please work. Oh jeez. Oh God. No red ring. No red ring. There are no red rings. It doesn't matter. I'm afraid. <laughs> Hold me. So the I, I guess Xbox One is having um, more problems uh, according to the news and these complaints are starting to mount. Um, lots of problems that go beyond the initial broken disk drives launch issue. These have to do with the Xbox One interface. Um, one journalist writing for Edge magazine published a scathing editorial t titled Xbox Y, the baffling 
incompetence of the Xbox One interface. Oh, I just brought up that article. I haven't read it. Yeah, I haven't read it either, and I definitely want to read it now. Quote, Xbox users, Xbox One's, Xbox One's u- debut user experience is stuttering, clunky, and a serious challenge to Xbox Live's long-held status as a premier console service, Edge wrote. Bluntly, they take too long to load, don't offer the functionality that Xbox Live was built on, and are inexplicably badly handled on the OS. One of the confusing things, because I watched the Giant Bomb live stream like over the course of the weekend they, they like live streamed uh all day them playing xbox one games uh-huh. and messing with it and one of the weird interesting kind of huh things about the ui is that it's constantly changing like your pins which is kind of like your favorites page is constantly reorganizing itself uh, according to what you've recently played, uh, so that you know that means it's you're never quite sure where a application is. But one of the things that they did that, like what the giant mom guys were thinking, is that it's incredibly easy to launch things using the connect voice commands because that prevents you from having to go through any of the menu. But if you do go through the menu. It's really difficult because things are reorganizing itself and things are kind of pages deep in this, you know, weird list of applications. So using the connect is fantastic, but if you don't use it, it's way more of a hassle. Huh. That's kind of interesting. I I forget. I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking of the word. It's called uh, condition, not conditional menus, but they're menus that will change based on your use. I think those are a really bad idea. Yeah. Occasionally, they're a good idea. Well, the PlayStation 4, the, the last game you played appears in the first slot. Right, it? right. Yeah, it, that's constantly the, changing. That's, that's understandable. That's where it works. But when your whole kind of layout, like you expect to know, like think about it. They're making a big deal about apps. One of the things about apps is you should always know where each app is. I the most Think about the iPhone, for example. The, the, the app, the originator and the alpha and omega of apps. When you have your iPhone, I don't really remember what my apps are based on what they look like. As much as I think about them as where their location is on my, my, my phone because I'm looking at a particular sector of my phone on a particular page, and their color. I'm not reading them. They just know where they are. You have to know where your apps are to get to them quickly. If they're constantly moving, you're constantly having to search your phone the whole time. And I really noticed that for apps that I used to use and I don't use so much anymore. Like, say, for example... Here's a good one. Went looking the other day for Red Laser. Red Laser is an app that you can scan a barcode and it will look up all the deals um, on the internet for that item. Really, really handy. Not used a lot. Not used hardly at all until Christmas time. And when Christmas time rolls around, then you can start to use it a lot. But I know it's on my phone. And I've literally gone through page after page after page after page looking for Red Laser and not able to find it. And I have to actually search for it. Now, I never have to look for Kindle on my iPhone because I use that every single day. I know it's in the second page, top left side. I know that my messages are on the first page, top left side. I know that Facebook is on my first page, middle left, left, middle left side. I know exactly where these are, so I need to know their location almost before I need to know their names. Because that tells me where to look. Mm -hmm. When you're changing apps locations, and they are still using apps on the Xbox One, they made it, you know, like you said, it's all set up like apps. When you're changing these locations constantly, you're constantly forcing everybody to read them. I guess that might be, there might be a reason for that, is trying to force everybody to use the voice commands on the Connect, because that would be the most efficient way to find them. Yeah. But it's not the worst. Yeah, I see what you're saying because you spend so much time looking. Mm-hmm. So where's like where it, is 
We, we, Mrs. Goley is, is famous for moving stuff around here at the house. I'll put something somewhere so I know where it is and it's gone and she's at work and I play the hunting games, like Easter egg hunting. Okay, where did I put those headphones that I had right here on the table? And you hunt around the house. That's what it's kind of like is you got to go hunting for stuff that you put in a certain area. I put this app here so I know where it is and now it's where? Right. Where is it? And right. then, you know, 10, 15 minutes later, you're like, oh, my God, really? And that's, I, as I was talking about it, and as I was thinking it through, just as I literally just now, as I was thinking it through, I'm like, why the hell did they do that? And I realized why they're doing it. It's for the Connect. They want you to use the Connect. If they keep hiding your apps, you're eventually going to say, you know, fuck this. Xbox, start Netflix. You're going to do that. It's the most efficient way to get to your apps is your voice if they keep hiding them, which is just so freaking Microsoft. That's so t- freaking typical is make something hard so they can shoebox you in to the way they want you to use the app, the uh, the machine. <laughs> oh, wow. The more I'm thinking about the more angry I am at Xbox for that. <laughs> oh, the one thing I, that is really great about the Xbox One is that when it goes into suspend mode, or like the not sus, yes, yeah, suspend mode. What it is doesn't suspend? Shut down mode? your game, your game. Oh, it doesn't. No. So, so that- it's like it's like the standby mode on Xbox One, or sorry, uh, PlayStation Four, but it doesn't shut down your game. Yeah, huh. because I've heard them talking on Giant Bomb again about how um, one of the guys was reviewing Dead Rising Three. And he he almost never saved the game. Mm-hmm. He'd play it, then he'd put the Xbox into suspend, you know, go do something, come back, turn on the Xbox, and start playing again. Uh-huh. And he could just do that over and over again without even ever having to save or really quit the game. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of disappointed because uh, over the weekend, I left the Xbox, paused, went to go see some movies, came back, and the system had automatically gone into suspend mode. And... Again, Battlefield, naturally. It had suspended my Battlefield game, lost the progress on that mission. It's like, oh, I don't want to keep replaying the same thing. So uh, that's kind of disappointing. Yeah. I wish you could, that it wouldn't cancel the game out. Yeah, me too. That's, but, uh, that sucks. And, you know. Uh, Project Sparked, closed beta. Starts today, which is okay. I'm really curious about watching what Project Spark does. It could either be something interesting or a big pile of crap. It's going to yeah. go either. It's not going to be in the middle ground. It's going to be either it works fantastically and it ch- it's a game changer and changes everything about how games are made, or it's going to be total and yeah, no, it's going to be total utter crap. Then. It's it's little Big Planet for Xbox. I think it's a slightly more than Little Big Planet. Well, I think it's more ambitious, but I think right, which means that's it's going to be crap. Essentially, what it is. So I, I think one of the most interesting things is going to be seeing the levels people make. Right, but like, okay, I okay. will say this: Little Big Planet, I considered to be crap because I thought it was a great idea for the first two weeks, and then it turned into shit, total shit. Little Big Planet was great. Little Big Planet was great in the first couple weeks. And then it became impossible to find anything good because people just made... Sh- there was no f- no decent filter on did, the game. But even then, the single-player levels were really Yeah, the sing- right. Then it was just a game. It wasn't what it was. The whole point of Little Big Planet was to build your own levels. I think they've definitely improved that yeah, with true. the second one. I didn't play Little Big Planet. But I never, I never played the second one, either. Yeah, I and say. I played the first one in... in I can't believe that I pulled off the side of the road on a road trip to pick it up. <laughs> you said pulled off, giggity. What? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> I gotta get something in for me. Is there something wrong with your internet? Aren't aren't you due to be dropped on the call anytime soon? It's a way of my pack. Don't you have an appointment with something? <laughs> Stop. What? No, really. You know, you, you, I you love make you. On a day early, then then you just have give I me told you how sexy you are? You look great today. No, Did you do no, something I don't with your hair? hair. No, if you lost no. weight. There's an app for that. <laughs> just tell me nice things. There's an app to tell you how sexy you are. <laughs> Battle Xbox, f- tell me how sexy I am. <laughs> you are not the fairest in the land. 
O O O O O. How is there not like a magic mirror app that does something like that? There you go. What? There's your idea. How does that not? There's exist? the idea. There's a million dollar idea. Battlefield Four patch delayed for China. Or sorry, Battlefield Four patch is delayed for the PS4. China Rising is out today. The new China eh. Rising. Oh, really? I don't want to play Battlefield until that patch comes out. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. I I haven't had that much trouble. Really haven't. And I, I only had and one I played crash, a lot of it. It was such a disheartening crash. Right. And God, I can't believe how you keep playing that goalie out of. It is. Yeah. It keeps crashing. It, it frustrates the crap I'm out of me. But I, 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 this is see. I don't play the team deathmatch stuff. In a, and World of Tanks was horrible. So this is kind of a combination of like the Call of Duty and team and uh, World of Tanks. This is, I love. I love getting in tanks and, and playing that. It, uh, that's just. I just really enjoy that. That's the only head to head I'll play mm-hmm. is with vehicles. And you got to capture points. Yeah, I get more spotting points, giggity, than I than I do than I do kills. I'll sit there and just spot all day long, and I'll just pick up spotting ribbon after spotting ribbon. Yeah, that's true. I will do that too. So it's it's uh, there's so much to do, especially in the conquest mode. Is that you can take a flag, you can you know defend a flag. You don't have to kill. That's the great thing. You don't have to kill to get points. True. You don't have to kill to get points, but in order to upgrade your weapons, you do have to kill. Yeah, you do. You get to... points for the things that you do, not Yeah. Overall I'm a pretty points. high level. I'm in the mid 20s right now, and I still haven't unlocked, you know, more than one gun in each category. Yeah, no. I've got tons of guns, I've got tons of scopes, and I'm level 18. God, yeah. I God, I got a lot of levels. Boy, I'm like level 23 or something and, and Open your battle I packs. Can't believe how high you are. And I get I get no guns unlocked cuz I'm doing I've unlocked all my rocket launchers. Yeah, open Have you opened any of your battle packs? I have. I've got some nice skins. <laughs> I've got some nice scopes for guns that, that I you don't, don't have unlocked. Right. So okay. yeah, the the it's been pretty useless so far. Then you need to do your XP. Well, you need to start and shooting you people. I sniped a couple of guys and I unlocked the sniper gun. You need to just get used to the idea that you're going to have to go, if you want better guns, you have to go out there and die a lot and shoot people. Even if you get yeah. an assist, a kill assist, you need to do that. Yeah, well, the problem is, is I went into that, uh, the, the confined one, the uh, the locker. Oh, pro- called, the <laughs> Operation locker? Oh, Operation Jesus. Locker. Yes, that is definitely just, and I went in there and, and took my support gun for just for the sole purpose of racking up kills and i knew i was going to die a hundred times and i did well i defended flags i shot people i probably killed 10 or 12 people died 10 or 12 times it was like a 50 50 and i crashed oh. lost oh, everything god and i must have unlocked the same sniper rifle three times because every time i snipe and unlock it it crashes and i gotta go and i don't have credit for it so, yeah so it's I don't yeah. know why you're having such a – I should say I don't know why I'm having such good luck with it. I haven't I crashed in multiplayer, just that one single-player crash. But, it yeah, crashes it's... all the time with me. All the God, time. that's 30%, awful. 30% of the time. That's heartbreaking. It is. It yeah. is. And I love it too, and I keep going back to it, but um, I want to go back to Need for Speed. I just got the soccer game, so I'm going to play some other things. I'm going to try to kill zone again. I, I want to give that another shot before I finally ditch it and also uh, – that Assassin's Creed game. I want to give that another shot. Okay, you're gonna uh, I'm still gonna, gonna hate it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try though. Right. I'm okay. gonna, I, I just gotta try to get used to those controls because right. they're very different. And if I can do that, then maybe it would be fun. If because I'm watching everybody sail through the seas and go search for treasure, I'm like, eh, I haven't got there. I'm still trying to my first sword fight. Right. You know, and maybe if I can get through that. Yeah, you'll you'll you, it, once you get past that and start sailing. Well, you actually have to go through another city before you start sailing seas. But yeah, yeah, but it's it's good. It's it's a way faster intro than uh, Assassin's Creed Three. Yeah. Oh god. Assassin's yeah. Creed Three took a long time before it kind of got going. Mm-hmm. This one gets going way faster. And where where did you see the phrase Australasia, Nick? Uh, it was on Ars Technica. Okay, I'm reading it on Kotaku and, sorry, uh, Joystick and their Australasia as well. Sony announces PS4 really? t- sales total 2.1 million, 700,000 in Europe, Australasia. I wonder if that was like an official term in the Sony press release and that's why everyone's repeating it. Mm, I'd probably. never heard that until now. Probably. 
Um, any other news that you guys have? I know that there's been a ton of stuff I wanted to talk about. Oh, Vita is... Is it Vita? No, Nintendo DS is getting Netflix. Hmm. Which is kind of intriguing. Yeah. Everything has Netflix. They've done a fantastic job. Yeah, I know. Yeah. God damn, I'm such an idiot for now. I even said it on this show. I said, whatever you do, buy Redbox. Ha <laughs> ha! Don't buy Netflix when it was dying. When they yeah, Redbox screwed kind of it up. Netflix, but even though they got the online streaming now, it's... Yeah, and th- their stock is going up, but not like Netflix. Netflix hit b- rock bottom and then shot right back up. Yeah, Ugh. they had that whole, when they split up the divisions there and they were... Yeah, like, and it was all so, bad. When they were creating yeah. that second... What was the name of that second? Like Quickster. Quickster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I'd only bought, taken that money and put it into... That I bought Redbox with and put it into Netflix... <sighs> It would have quadrupled (sighs) because it's now Netflix is like at $300 a a share. And I think when it fell, it fell at like 40. Yeah, it was was down there. Yeah. But you know what's funny? There's a red box out in front of the grocery store that I go to and there's nobody in front of that anymore. So I don't know if they're streaming it or what they're doing, but there's there's, there's, there used to be people who said, you know, sit behind people in line to get at it now. Really? Yeah. What I have found about Redbox is that the one time I've gone to do that is to rent a game. I rented Beyond Two Souls from a red box. Uh-huh. Because there's no other place to rent games. Like I don't I don't want to rent enough games to get Gamefly, you know, to have a constant subscription because I don't need it that much. But there's like no Blockbuster, no Hollywood video, no rental store where I can just go in, rent a game for you know, a few days, play it, and take it back. So I'm glad that Redbox at least exists. Right. Because and I'm glad I, to have I that option. I really wish there was a Redbox near me. That's my only problem. Or whenever I want to do that. You? I thought they were in like every grocery store. <sighs> well, yeah, but I kind of live in an area where there aren't a lot of grocery stores. Oh. Well, I guess there, I mean, where where's the most recent grocery store? I guess there might be one at like the one that's two towns over that we go to occasionally and I probably could do that. But I tend to go to things like Molly Stones and Whole Foods and Tr- Trader Joe's for my grocery store. Knob Hill. They don't have red boxes. I'm sorry, I go to like these cheeky, cheeky organic food and tofu and yeah, the alfalfa sprouts, sprouts where well, they charge me $10 for a, a head of lettuce because it's organic. A Whole Foods recently opened up near me, and that intersection has gotten awful. <laughs> awful. So bad. It is so bad. But their their produce is so good and so expensive. They added a stoplight on my commute. <laughs> it takes me like 16 minutes to get to work instead of 15. Yeah, sorry, Fuck dude. Whole Foods. <laughs> uh, you need to work, work from home more often. I wish I could. So I'm, um, oh, here's an interesting story. Steam over the holiday weekend. Wow. Did it get hammered? Steam handled 7 million concurrent users over the holiday weekend. Not just 7 million total, 7 million concurrent. Oh, wow. Maybe they should build the healthcare website for the government. Yep. And that was a new record. The last milestone was six million. Good for them. Yeah, good, good to that see was last year. Steam getting popular, right? And not only that, but popular, but stable. But that's that's, that's the beauty yeah. of growing small instead of being you know like inundated the first day. When you have something yeah, that's yeah. that everybody's heard about, everybody's waiting for, and it just like cr- just crushes the servers. That's that sucks. But when you have something that's slowly ramping up, and the difference between seven million that's a lot. But you think that it took them a year to get from six million to seven million mm-hmm. users. That's pretty impressive. That is. So all right, have we run this down to its fine nub? Should we close this out? Run into the ground. Yeah, we kinda I think we kinda did. Um all right, so are we doing happy endings, by the way? Sure. Um, maybe. Yeah. We have the strength for it. I mean, we'll I, I know that since it's a different day. Play by your tomorrow. Yeah. I'm sorry. What? 
I could talk about Warframe. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We have Warframe. Yeah. Chaos taught. Me and you had to play. <laughs> he taught to you. Play. He taught you. I just kind of. I, oh, I'll, okay. we'll, we'll go over it. We'll talk about it. There we go. There's what we're going to talk about. It's our endeavor into Warframe. All right. So let's close this out. You have been listening to Game Hounds, episode 242. We've recorded this on third, sorry, Tuesday, December 3rd, 2013. I've been Edie Sellers, and with me has been Holy Goalie and Nick Nicola. The ways to get a hold of us are our website, GameHounds.net, our Facebook page, GameHounds, sorry, Facebook.com, The GameHounds, and um, our voicemail line. Our voicemail line is 304-300-9889, and that also receives texts. Yes, so send, and, and it's in Goalie's possession. So whenever you text or send a message to Goalie, or send the message that line, you send it directly to Goalie. And Nick, you never know what I'm doing. Right. You never know what, and I answer it no matter what I'm doing, I will answer it. Really? Even if you're sleeping? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, there. It'll buzz. It'll buzz. <laughs> All right. So you might want to think about that. And finally, our, uh, our uh, email is gamehounds at gmail.com. Guys, I guess we'll talk to you. God, now it's 20 minutes. Maybe we'll be a little bit late. We'll start at 1210. How about that? I can actually get some food. Oh, oh. don't happy endings today? Yeah, or can't do it tomorrow. Nix doesn't have a uh, doesn't Ooh, have internet. Want to just do it you and me tomorrow? Yeah, noon me tomorrow. Okay, noon tomorrow. So we're actually holding off until tomorrow for happy endings. Yeah. So go. Unless you guys want to do them, but I, I don't think I can. I gotta I got work tonight. I gotta do some things. Okay, all right. That works for me. All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.